Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine What's a light your story? on incredible What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I'm your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, hair lies below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Kayla Lee, the Director of the Adaptive Outdoor Education Center. Welcome, Kayla. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm very excited to, to share your story and the story of the center and all the great work that you guys do. So let's, let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Cool. So my name is Kayla Lee, and I am the director here at the Adaptive Outdoor Education Center based in Maine. So I've been a part of the AOEC since we opened in December of 2015. Um, I love the outdoors and helping to create access and adaptations to allow people of all abilities the chance to explore and engage in recreation. Well, that. How did, how did you get involved with this? I'm actually a West Coast girl, so I moved to Maine um, with my partner in 2015, and I worked for another nonprofit in the area um, that was kind of creating outdoor recreation. And I met um, a couple out there and they had asked me what I liked to do and sort of my passions. And I said it was, you know, working with people of all abilities um, in the outdoors. And they asked me if I had met Bruce and Anne Marie, who built the Adaptive Center. And I said, no. And they said, well, they're building something up here and we don't know what it is, but you should get in touch with them. So I emailed Bruce and met with him and Anne Marie and the rest is history. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, so tell us about kind of the, the what, what's, what's going on with the uh, AEOC. Uh, yeah. AOEC. And it's doing it's the a community lot. these days. <laughs> so we were founded by Bruce and Anne Marie Alveston. Our nonprofit is technically the Alveston Foundation. And then we do business as both the Adaptive Outdoor Education Center and the Aphasia Center of Maine. So Bruce and Anne Marie got their started, got their start in this world uh, when Anne Marie's father had a stroke and he acquired aphasia. So for folks out there who might not know what aphasia is, um, it's loss of language, not intellect, and it affects a person's ability to read, write, and speak. So Bruce and Anne Marie started hosting an annual retreat uh, for people with aphasia and really saw the positive impact that one weekend could have on one population and wanted to do more. And Bruce um, had visited a lot of programs out West, a lot of different adaptive programs, and saw that the two sort of major barriers that they were overcoming through those programs was accessible lodging and transportation. So his dream became a reality when they purchased uh, a couple of vans for transportation and built the AOEC here in Carabasset Valley, Maine. So we are a fully accessible overnight facility and can sleep up to 25 people. So we kind of got our start uh, basically running as an accessible hotel. And then from there have grown to develop our own recreation programs. So we have uh, alpine skiing, Nordic skiing, indoor and outdoor rock climbing, sailing, music, just a whole plethora of fun stuff happening. And then last year, we also opened a second facility down in Brunswick, Maine, uh, which operates as a day program facility and is located on 20 acres of land. And so we're working on an adaptive mobility initiative to build some you know, varying level hiking trails for people of all abilities. Uh, we have an accessible disc golf course, a portable rock wall. Uh, some beautiful gardens, and then great space to host programs and events. Well, sign me up. This sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I'm going to tell my, my, my partner about this, and we need, to, we need to get out there. We need to up to Maine from Washington, D.C. Please. Um, so, like, how do, how, how, do people, how do people find you? Tell us your website. Tell us how do people sign up. 
Yes, yeah, so we've got an awesome website, adaptiveoutdooreducationcenter.org. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well um, with sort of that big spiel of all that we do. We have a lot of awesome stuff happening year round. Uh, the Brunswick location is just 30 miles north of Portland, Maine, so a little bit closer. Um, and then here in Carabasset Valley, we're about two and a half hours from Portland or four hours from Boston. That's awesome. And yeah. what does your day-to-day -day look like these days? Day-to-day, -day, uh, it's very different every day. And that's something I really love about it. We're a small but mighty team. Um, and in true non-profit non form, uh, we all wear many hats. So on sort of a dreary, cold day, I could be in the office catching up on admin, doing grant writing, all that fun stuff. Or in the summer, we could be out rock climbing in Acadia or water skiing or fly fishing. So it's very different each day. And that's that's something special. Never a dull moment over there. So like, I love that. And so why is it so important for people with disabilities to have access to adaptive recreation and kind of these educational programs you guys put on? Yeah. So I think opening up recreation and education to people all of abilities creates community and friendships. I think about the reasons that I like to recreate and in large part it's because of the people I get to spend time with um, and it's a huge source of my social scene. So I think everyone should have the opportunities to recreate, uh, to try, to set goals and accomplish them, to conquer fears and to learn something new. And that's really what we do at the AOVC. We create an opportunity for people to try in a safe and supportive environment. Um, some things like conquering a tough route, climbing over the ocean in Acadia, or skiing a powder day, um, or putting on a fashion show for aspiring models. These are all really incredible experiences and we've been able to share them with people who otherwise thought uh, that it wasn't possible. And that's kind of, the importance of creating access. It's empowering, it's incredible memories with friends, and it's an enhanced quality of life. Oh, and it's just too often people with disabilities get stuck in their homes and they don't know that the world out there is for them and that there's so much that they can do. Um, sometimes they just need kind of the right setup. You're, you were saying it earlier, like getting to, uh, to a place with transportation there's so many transportation barriers for families. And then when you actually need accessible lodging, you know, a lot of places don't really understand what accessible lodging means. And it does mean different for, for different abilities. So being able to make sure you have those accommodations and you're going to be able to have a fun time, but more, more so having a safe time. And it's time that you can get in the door and go to sleep at night and, and then fill the day with adventures. But like, you guys are absolutely putting all the pieces of the puzzle together to allow those families just to, to, to thrive in the community, which is, which is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. And we try to put together, you know, a full package for people. They have a place that they can come up to, they can stay activities they can do as a whole family. It's just a pretty, you know, pretty sweet deal. Uh, and families really love it. And we're super receptive to their input as well. Um, this summer we hosted a wheel together retreat and we had 10 folks who were living with spinal cord injury come up and after the retreat, they had some great recommendations for us as well to just kind of make our lodging even more accessible and mindful of all abilities, which was awesome. Was that with Jesse? Yes. With Jesse from, yes. uh, Wheel Me Foundation and Monica Quimby as well. Oh, I, I love Monica as well. Oh, She's nice. Amazing. Yep. I, I, my, my nonprofit also does adventures and we, we put on an adventures weekend in Virginia beach and Monica came down for that. She's, she's oh, awesome. Such good energy. And we really are lucky to have had both of them. It was wonderful. And you said it before, it's just like one of the best parts about adventures and just being able to get out of your homes is that community building that those relationships, that friendship, the, everything that comes together by being out with making memories with people. And it's just, you know, when I was paralyzed below my shoulders, you know, it, it flipped my world upside down, but it also opened the door to 
you know, thousands of friendships and a community that cares so deeply about each other and connected with each other. It's just a matter of having those touch points where we can be in the same room in the same environment together and to, and to, and to have fun together. And there's nothing better than that because they, they do become yeah, lifelong nothing better than having friendships fun. and lifelong memories. Yeah, there's nothing better. Um, so I would, I would want, tell me more about the education programs. What, what are, what are the education programs and what does that look like? Yeah, so we don't necessarily have education specific programs, but we like to integrate education into everything that we do. We work a lot with um, students from the local universities. And then for example, um, every September we do a climbing trip to Acadia National Park. And part of that trip is going to the College of Atlantic and having uh, a local professor give us a lecture. And every year that has some sort of underlying message, um, whether it's, you know, recycling or global warming or different tones, um, but it's super important. And we have people of all ages who come to that weekend and the professor that we work with does an incredible job of giving a lecture that's engaging and fun. And that's kind of what we like to do through all of our programs is to really loop in the education piece. Um, into the recreation activity, how to be good stewards, thinking about leave no trace. Um, and yeah, having students involved is awesome. We get to learn a lot from them and what they're doing. Another piece of the puzzle that you guys. Yeah, exactly. Another piece of the puzzle that you guys bring to the table to have the full package, the full experience. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> We're trying. And what, what are some... Yes, yeah, so good. <laughs> What, what are some of your more popular uh, recreational activities? Yeah, being based uh, at the base of Sugarloaf Mountain, alpine skiing in the winter is hugely popular. Um, we partner with four other mountains also, so we have a pretty good reach on different regions in Maine for people to ski. And then also in the summer, our Horizon Sailing Program is one of our most popular and our longest standing programs to be able to get out on the water as an individual, as a family, as a day program or group home. Um, it's just really empowering and a great way to enjoy summer in Maine. That's awesome. And so like with, with the people that you serve, is it is it anybody with a disability? What is kind of, who, who, is, who are the, your clients out, who are the people that can benefit from all these awesome programs? Yeah, we are open to all ages and all abilities. So if we have um, anyone who wants to try and can benefit from having a little extra support or some sort of adaptive equipment um, or that we can help in any way, we are totally open to that. We don't ask for any sort of doctor's note. Uh, we just, you know, if you come to us and you want to try, we'll give you the opportunity as best we can. And then when people sign up to is what are the costs associated with all of this? Yeah, we try to be as low cost as possible. So for example, a two hour sailing session in the summer is $8 per person. Same with an indoor rock climbing session. Um, in the winter, we charge $35 for two half day ski lessons. And that includes your lift ticket, your lesson, your rental gear. Um, lodging ranges from $66 a night for a room that sleeps three people to $150 a night for a room with a private bathroom that sleeps four people. So when you come to Sugar that Loaf, is... um, <laughs> yeah, that can be a pretty big barrier. And we, we try to offer everything at low cost. That is very low cost, especially for all that goes into everything that you guys put together. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, Thank you. That's so awesome. And too, too often with people with disabilities, they think of just the person with the disability, right? It's just, that's the individual, but they don't, a lot of people just don't realize it. It takes a team. It takes a community. It takes all these different people to allow that person to not only survive and thrive in the community, which a lot of times it falls on the caregivers. And I just loved when I saw on your guys' website, that you guys do a caregiver retreat. Like, tell me about that. And why is it so important that 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 exists. Yeah, just like you mentioned, it's we're all a community and we're all working together. And there are over 53 million caregivers in the US alone. And it's a huge population that's so incredibly underserved. Um, 
an article called them the invisible army, uh, which is so true. And last year we hosted two caregiver retreats and the response was incredible. We work with an amazing woman named Heather Zakali from her organization called Brutally Beautiful. And she's really developed the whole caregiver program. She's a caregiver, she's been cared for. So she really sees things from kind of a 360 perspective. And the retreat includes like a holistic approach to healing and self-care through different nature-based activities and an interactive workshop. So we kind of source caregivers. First, we kind of start by trying to source them from Maine. And then once we have some folks who are interested from there, we sort of move out the bubble to fill all of the spots. So this year we have folks coming from as far as Texas. Um, but we also have a lot of New England caregivers, which is pretty awesome to be able to provide a retreat experience for them. That's wonderful. That's so cool. I, I've, I've not seen enough organizations and foundations out there do that. And I think that just shows the extra mile you go. And they, you guys, you guys get it. That's, I love <laughs> that. You guys get it. And you have the full package of, of programs to, to really impact the entire disability community. This is so wonderful. Uh, we need we need you guys to be every in every single state in this country. Um, Bruce well, always we says we're, for that. we're working on world domination. So stay tuned. <laughs> I love it. Um, I I will support this. Um, and so tell tell me more about like how others after they're hearing about all this great stuff, how can they volunteer? How can they get involved? Yeah, we're so incredibly grateful to all the amazing volunteers who donate their time and expertise to our organization. And we really wouldn't be able to do all that we do without them. So uh, we're very grateful. And folks can always get involved, whether it's for a day, it's for a whole season, it's for life. We're happy to have folks uh, participate, however that might look for them. And through our website, we've got a great uh, Get Involved tab where you can learn more see upcoming volunteer opportunities, fill out an application, or you can always just get in touch, um, email, phone, Facebook, whatever is easiest. Uh, we're happy to talk to folks and get them involved, however. I love it. I love it. And so I feel like there's going to be a lot of proud achievements and accomplishments, but just tell me, tell me one that just really stands out to you that you're it's just a proud accomplishment with the organization. Yeah, it's very hard to pick one, um, but I had thought about this question a bit and think about programs that, like you mentioned, impact the whole community or the whole family. Um, and this summer, we piloted a summer camp for youth with autism, and I really underestimated uh, how big of an impact it would have for the parents and not just for the camper. So summer camp in Maine is such a huge part of kids' lives, and we wanted to be able to provide that same experience for a population that didn't really have that same opportunity. Um, and for parents to drop their kids off with us for four hours each day and to know that they were safe and to trust you know, us as an organization that what we, we would be providing would be a fun experience uh, was really powerful. And then sort of going back to that caregiver retreat and underserved population, it also gave parents four hours a day for themselves, which I think was really huge um, and something they weren't, weren't used to. You know, parents were like, yeah, we're going to go to lunch together. And that was a big deal uh, to be able to go to an uninterrupted, uninterrupted lunch together. Uh, just felt really good. So I think any sort of program that can be a benefit to the family as a whole uh, is something we're really proud of. That's awesome. So yeah. awesome. And <laughs> so much within the community, there's there's many communities that make up uh, this world that we live in. And one is the business community. I was mm. wondering kind of with the disability community and all the people that you serve, why, why is, what's one message you could share with the business community and why it's so important to cater to this, this, mm. this audience? Yeah, recently we've been talking a lot about access versus adaptability and viewing access really as a human right. Um, so businesses should want to be an accessible place so that they can cater to every potential customer. Um, by being accessible, you're really creating opportunities for both individuals, but also families of all, ab all abilities 
to utilize your services. Um, and everyone should have the ability to feel welcomed and safe and comfortable and included. So I think for businesses, it, it should be a no brainer. <laughs> I agree with you. And you, you mentioned before there is eight or you mentioned 53 million different caregivers out in the world. Um, there's 80 million people with disabilities are in the United States alone. And that number just will always continue to grow, unfortunately. Um, but it, in general, because it's it's really not a matter of if, but when. Disability doesn't discriminate. It, it can happen at any point. And, um, but just uh, my, my last question I, I wanted to, to, to ask you is, if you could talk with any, have a conversation with anybody in the world, who would it be and why? <laughs> this is a funny question. I've always had a love for Betty White. Um, and even in college, I did, I had a public speaking class and I did my speech on Betty White. Um, and I learned a lot about her and not just like how beloved she was, especially in Hollywood and had such a great reputation, but also she had really progressive beliefs um, and stood up for diversity and inclusion, even back in the 50s. As a woman back in the 50s, standing up for those types of things just felt really inspiring. And I feel like a conversation with her would be so, so powerful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love Betty White too. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you so much for your time today. And you guys are doing such great work and they're so lucky to have you as the director and um, continue doing all the great work that you do. And um, so thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much for including us. Um, it's great to meet other people in this world, especially people advocating and we're just really appreciative. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kayla. And to our audience, thank you so much for staying to the end. Until next time, take care everyone. Bye.